Absolutely. Uh, reconstruction surgery is an essential part of every micrographic surgical case, and sometimes this comes as a big surprise to patients. Um, sometimes the patient may have seen their dermatologist before and had a cancer removed successfully with liquid nitrogen and not really had to go through much of a reconstruction because the wound was allowed to heal on its own. But in Mohs surgery, often the surgical defect uh, needs a reconstruction. It's also important to remember that the reconstruction is very dependent on the size of the final cancer. A lot of cancers that are referred to micrographic surgery have an aggressive growth pattern, which basically means that there's a significant amount of the tumor that's hidden from the naked eye of any previous physician and even the most surgeons themselves. We can't identify that without the use of the microscopic assessments that we use with micrographic surgery. So as we describe to a lot of our patients, sometimes what they can see on the surface is only the tip of the iceberg. So if the cancer site itself is much larger, a lot of times it needs a much more complicated reconstruction. When the sites are smaller or certainly in areas where there's excess tissue, many times standard types of surgical closures can be used with minor undermining or a minor stretching of the skin. This often leaves the site looking very, very good once there's been adequate healing. Typically, one of the goals of plastic surgery is to try to repair like with like tissue, which basically means when we're trying to rebuild something, if we've got a cancer site on your cheek and it has a certain amount of depth, remembering that these cancers can go deeply and extend deep into the tissues like the underlying fat, we want to make sure that there's not a hollow there. So we transfer a segment of tissue from the adjacent skin, sometimes with a geometric pattern design, which is specifically designed not only to bring skin over the surface of the wound, but also to bring fat in underneath so there's not a hollow when we're finished. This is a typical flap form of reconstruction. When wound sites are even larger but maybe shallow, occasionally we'll use skin grafting or a transplantation of tissue from one location of the body where there is excess and we can close the wound itself and transfer it to an area where there isn't excess and we don't have the ability to close the wound. In certain surgical cases that become more complicated, like the eyelid or the nose, let's say, there are specialized tissues that are responsible for function. For example, the eyelid has a structure called a tarsal plate, which provides support. And if that's compromised, it needs to be repaired with the same tissue. Sometimes that requires a surgery that necessitates more than one surgical step and a temporizing procedure where a tissue is connected, let's say, from one eyelid to another. Sometimes that can be shocking for the patient, but in the end, it provides them with the most ideal outcome and the best way to make their eye look normal. The same sort of case applies for the nose. The nose is a complex structure with open nostrils that are maintained open because of cartilage supports in the nose itself. We all know that because we can kind of wiggle our nose or move it around if we grab it by the tip. But a lot of the shape of the nose is maintained by this internal structure. If that's compromised by the cancer extending through it, it needs to be rebuilt in a systematic way, often requiring multiple surgeries. But typically, that is the best way to get a re an ideal reconstruction. In the end, all patients are told they will need a reconstruction of some sort. In some remote cases, rare cases like in the scalp, that may even be allowing the wound to heal on its own by secondary intention. But patients will get scars, and sometimes that comes as a shock to them. Hopefully, they end up with a very, very well-healed surgical scar and an excellent shape to their reconstruction, one that's very, very satisfying. But it does come as a shock to many patients that they actually require reconstruction after most surgery.